Hi, I'm Gene Cavassis. In this episode, I'm going to show you how to build Han Solo's DL-44 blaster pistol. Pew, pew, pew! Stay tuned. I went on Google Images and looked up Han Solo's blaster, and I downloaded and printed several photos of it but I sized up one to be the size I wanted the pistol or felt it was closest to be. Taking the scissors, cutting out the image, I'm using a material that is a PVC board. Now you can pick this up in several places and I'll actually give you a link below. I'm using half inch and eighth inch PVC plastic. I picked this up from a sign shop, or actually I used a sign supplier, and uh, he gave me a couple pieces of scrap. I'm using a white pencil and I'm going to trace out the basic shape of the blaster. Not anything like the scope, but just the basic body without the barrel. Now, after finishing that, I'm going to do the same thing for the eighth inch thick pieces and with that, I'm going to want to also sketch out where the wood stock would begin and also I'm going to trace around where I think the trigger would recess into there as well and I will mark that out to make sure I cut those off. So now I'm going to take it to the bandsaw and start cutting out my my image. The two piece, eighth inch pieces I'm going to tape together and then cut both pieces out at the same time. You don't have to get real critical because you're going to turn around and sand these pieces down later to match the, uh, the other piece as well. Now I also took the pieces apart and drew some of the other indentions that are on the gun and you can see where I just cut those out or trimmed those out as well. Using a drill I'm going to drill a starting hole in the half inch thick body and cut out the trigger. Using a Dremel I'm going to start shaping the trigger and the uh, trigger guard around. That'll help to get that shape that I'm looking for. Now tracing the wood stock I took two pieces of quarter inch wood, some scrap I had lying around, taped those together as well and I'm gonna first after tracing out the body of the, the grip I'm gonna cut the slots that you can see in the design on both sides. Now after that's done I'll cut the shape of the pistol grip out. I'm going to use a file and sandpaper and just start smoothing out my pieces that I cut. Using PVC glue that's used for PVC pipe, I started to uh, glue some of these pieces together. Using some clamps, I'm going to hold the, uh, the material down. Set it aside, give it a chance to dry. Using a belt sander that I turned upside down, I'm going to start working the grips out on the pistol. The wood sands very easily. Be careful, don't sand your fingers or your knuckles. But you can see that between the belt sander and then a lot of hand sanding, you can get that worked out pretty close to the body. I'll trim a little more, come back, and add some additional sanding. Once I have that basically shaped, I'm going to take and drill the screw mount that goes between the grips that hold it to the body. Now that I've screwed the pistol grips down onto the body, I'm going to use the Dremel again to shape the body back to the grips and keep it tight. Now 
Now I'm going to actually use the sanding on the Dremel to help shape the, uh, the grips back in a little bit and then put a little more hand sanding in as well. Using a hacksaw, I'm going to come back and put those grooves back into the, the grips where I had uh, kind of sanded them out. Using some Minwax finish stain I had floating around, I'm, uh, I'm going to put some color to these grips. Once I've finished staining the, uh, the grips, I'll be setting those aside to let them dry. Okay, now we're ready to start putting together some of the smaller pieces. You can look at the photos and you can cut a lot of the detail out using the 8th inch PVC plastic to start adding some of the finer details of the body. Also remember to sand down all of your pieces. And now looking here there's this silver circle thing on there. So I'm going to take a paddle bit, a one inch paddle bit, and drill the basic indention. I'm not sure if I'm going to leave it this way, but it gives me an indication of where that hole has to be. Adding some more of the detail on. Taking the bandsaw, I've also put some groove cuts into the hammer to give it a more realistic look. Using a file and sandpaper to uh, smooth some of your additional pieces, lots of the smaller detail will help the gun look more realistic. And take your time and, and glue some of those pieces down. glue dries clear and dries fast, but you're going to be spray painting it anyway, so don't worry too much about overage, but try to keep it fairly tight. Now laying out where I think the scope mounts would be, the safety mounts, and any other smaller detail and getting those all glued on. I decided too, I'm going to build a sight for the top. And looking at some of the photos, it looked like it had almost like an adjustable sight. So I'm going to recreate one of those. And even using it sideways on the bandsaw, putting some grooves into it to give that measurement look to it. Sanding all my edges. And even the PVC is soft enough that you can even taper things. I'm going to glue the sight down on top of this and then add a few more detail pieces. You can add as much detail to this as you want. The more detail I think the, the more realistic the, uh, the blaster is going to look. I'll now take the sight and glue it to the uh, top of the pistol body. And now I'm going to take a piece of plastic tubing and cut it and then notch the cuts in so that they'll fit into the grooves that I've already pre-cut into the body of the blaster. Now let's look at for some other pieces. I swiped a pump piece off of an old uh, jar of lotion my wife had, and that piece I think is going to look very similar to some of the details on the barrel. Taking all this apart and just kind of lining up, I also found a 
plastic screw cap in the plumbing section at the hardware store. I'm going to, because it's shiny, I can't mark it, so I'm going to put a, a piece of painter's tape around that. And great shot of the side of my hand, I'm going to uh, cut that piece down as well. Now, taking a thinner piece of the, uh, the plastic tubing, you can trim it and use it as spacers to help fill the, uh, the inside of some of these cap rings. And then I'm going to hot glue those down. I also found a piece of uh, plastic tubing, and I'm going to add that to a little bit thicker barrel. A lot of this you can find around the house. Most of it I can find at Home Depot. Using some wire insulating, I'm going to use that to imitate that coil-looking thing on the front of the blaster. This material is really easy to cut, and once I have that together, I'm going to use hot glue to secure it. And once it's secured down, I'm going to take hot glue and fill the rest of it in, including the sides. I'll come back with an exacto knife and trim off any excess that I had. I found some of these plastic plug pieces and I think those will work great for the knobs on the side of the scope now. I'm going to trim them down so they're closer to flush and after I trimmed them down realized the inside was cooler looking than the top cap so that kind of makes a nice ring look. I also used a $1.50 automotive funnel and I'm going to use that for the blaster's nose or this I guess the blast suppressor. Cutting this down I'm going to uh, mark the holes that I want to drill into it to look similar to the hole pattern that's in the photos. After drilling those, now I need to fit this on, but I've got to trim the, the tube off to be flush. That's a great shot of my hand. And now utilizing a wood dowel that I picked up at the hardware store as well to fit inside and all these tubes will fit on top of that and I'll trim that off to be just barely into the suppressor so you won't see that. After I make sure all these fit, I'll come back and run a bead of hot glue around all of these and secure them on good and tight. I'll also cut out a top sight that'll go on top of the barrel for additional decoration. And then utilizing a screw, I'm going to screw this down, and I'll also use the PVC glue as well. This looks pretty well ready to go. Set the uh, grips to the side. Now I'm going to start on the scope mount. I found a couple brackets, and I was going to use these plastic clamps or for the uh, scope mount, but then I stumbled across these additional clamps, and they were only about 65 cents a piece, and they're a self-locking around a piece of tubing, so I'm going to use those. I also bought about a 12-foot length of electrical PVC, and I'm going to cut that as the scope. I like it because the end of it is flared out similar to the scope. I'm using the uh, cut out photo as kind of my measurement. I also then with the bandsaw cut two tight rings around each end of it to give it more of the look that the scope would actually have. Now I'm going to take my two metal brackets and I'm going to have to, utilizing the hacksaw, trim some of these pieces down so that it looks more like a scope mount. I am definitely going to have to invest in a decent vise. 
Now that I have my pieces cut, I'm going to clamp them together and then utilizing a couple small holes, I will screw the two pieces down together. Then I'll also screw down the two pipe clamps, set my scope into it, and these lock right down on top of it. Now, utilizing another one of those plugs, I'm going to cut this for the adjustment ring that's on top of the scope. Do a little final trim with the Dremel, and I'll put a set screw in the top of it as well. So after I've glued it, I'll run a screw down to secure that. This looks pretty close to being ready to paint. Spray painting the entire scope and gun black. I'm going to let this dry. Once it's dry, I'm going to come in and I took a water bottle cap, sprayed that silver, and it fits perfectly down into the uh, ring. I like the look of that. The scope's ready to mount with a couple of screws placed in it. We can secure this down. And then I also used a large washer as well. Now, I'll bolt the grips down. Now the gun, for the most part, is finished and ready to go, but I want to kind of give it that look of some battle wear. So I'm going to use some water-based acrylic gold, and I'm using gold or a brass color because the scope in the photos actually looks like it's got some brass under the paint. So I'm doing a dry brush technique where you take your paint and you brush out 90% of it on a paper towel and then you can paint it on and then what you don't want to use kind of wipe off with a cloth or even another paper towel. Now using some metallic silver I'm going to paint the barrel, the blaster and then also take a cloth and kind of wipe some of that off to give it that aged wear look. You can then also come back and hit some of your high spots on this and you can wipe some of it off but it kind of gives it that aged or worn look a little bit that it is the gun's been in battle. So now you're going to go out and spray paint a clear coat onto the, uh, the body. Now, one word of advice. If you buy one brand of spray paint and spray the body say black make sure that you're buying the same brand of clear coat me I bought two different brands one ends up being a little hotter than the other one and you end up getting what I'm calling an alligator effect now my son said that was fine he liked that everybody I showed it to said that's kind of cool. I like that. That just gives it kind of that battle look. But it never makes me happy to get an effect that I wasn't planning on. So keep that in mind. I'm going to leave this one, but I would definitely make sure you use the same product. So I had a lot of fun building this blaster. I hope you learned from it. I hope you're willing to give it a try. If you have any ideas, suggestions, or comments, please put them in the comment section down below, and I'll get back with you as soon as possible. Hey, thanks again for watching. Consider subscribing, and we'll see you soon.